When I was 11 years old, uh, World War II had just started. My father, had, who had been in the Army in World War I, had gone back into service. I was in sixth grade, and uh, so uh, uh, it would, they were unusual times back then. And it was, you could be a young entrepreneur then, because uh, by the middle of 1942, most of the able-bodied men had gone into service. And if you were 12, 13, or 14 years old and wanted to work, it was easy to find a job. So I did a lot of various things. I cut, cut grass, uh, trimmed people's hedges for them, delivered papers, worked in the drugstore in the old soda fountain as a soda jerk, did little work for construction companies, and it was very easy to uh, pick up extra money during those days because there weren't many able-bodied men around. They were all gone into service. Ooh, let's see. Uh, uh, number one, uh, do the right thing. You know, I mean, you got to do the right thing all the time. And uh, even when you're 14 years old, I think you know the difference between right and wrong. So uh, do the right thing. Uh, number two, uh, work hard. There's no substitute for hard work. Number three, uh, set yourself some goals. Uh, if you set high goals, you might be surprised. Be careful where you aim, you might get there. Uh, the next thing I'd say is uh, don't complicate things. Uh, people tend to want to complicate things in life and uh, don't complicate things. And the last thing I'd say was uh, treat other people with respect. I think if you're going to go any place in life, you got to treat other people with respect. And I'm 85 now. It took me a long time to realize this, but you're not always right. <laughs> and especially when you're younger, you think you're always right. You really aren't. And uh, respect other people's opinion. Uh, what they think might be right, and your opinion might be wrong. Well, uh, my father was uh, gone in this army when I was in high school, but uh, uh, my parents both uh, not only wanted, but insisted that I go to college, get a good education. And uh, uh, by going to college, I got a good education, and then I came to Knoxville, Tennessee. And when I got out of the service, the university got me a job, which was with a company which we were then in the gas station business like that, and that enabled me to get started, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to start pilot our own business. So uh, they gave me the advice, go to college and work hard, and uh, uh, hopefully good things will happen to you. I was 17 years old when I started college. I had no career at it. <laughs> to be honest with you, it never occurred to me. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, our life was organized. You finished high school, you either went in the service or you went to college. When you got out of college, you went in the service. So uh, when I got out of college, uh, I went in the Army for two years. I was in Korea. Fortunately, the armistice had been signed. But when I came back was the first time I ever really thought, hey, I'm going to have to make a living. And uh, fortunately, I found a business that I liked and was suitable to uh, uh, my skills and everybody in our family skills. So uh, once we got pilot started, we just wanted to keep growing. Well, I guess my real mentor was General Nail, the football coach at Tennessee, because he taught me the things um, I, I, I've mentioned before. He taught me we had to work hard, we had to have a game plan, we had to be disciplined, uh, you know, we had to. Uh, uh, to perform as we had to do the things he told us to. And what I learned, if we did the things he told us to, we would win. And that's an important thing to know in life. If you're disciplined and do the things you're supposed to do, you're going to succeed. And that's what we learned. Well, I think, you know, they can say whatever you want to about it, but to do uh, to start a business and have any form of success, you have to be lucky, you have to be at the right place at the right time. 
I was very fortunate. I got out of the service. I needed a job. I got a job with a man named Sam Claiborne who had a chain of gas stations. And, and uh, uh, that was, if I hadn't come to Tennessee, if I hadn't played football, I wouldn't have had this opportunity to go to work for him. If I hadn't gotten the opportunity to work for him, I wouldn't have known anything about this business. And who knows what I, what I would have been doing. So it was it, the day I went to, he was in La Folla, Tennessee. Then when I went to La Folla, Tennessee, interview with him and took that job. That was a pivotal moment because it started me going. Or you could might say the day I came to the University of Tennessee, because without all that progression, that wouldn't have happened. So either the day, first day I came to Knoxville or the day I went to work in that business would be the pivotal moments. Nothing. <laughs> now, there's some things that, that, that was a little bit too quick of an answer, but it really wasn't. We've been very fortunate, and the, the one thing that the one thing you need to grow a business are you need financial capital and you need people, intellectual capital. I spend too much of my time looking for money to build more locations, trying to borrow money and doing this or that. Not enough time getting quality people. When we finally figured out, heck, this is a people business, then we started doing well. So the thing I would do differently is realize the importance of people sooner. Once again, people. Yeah, it, it's a people business. Uh, uh, you know, uh, anybody will tell you if you're in any kind of the retail business, you really, you're selling the product, but your real product are the people who are selling it for you. Uh, you know, if the people in the pile of Flying J stores aren't courteous, don't treat the customers right, no matter how good our product is, how competitively priced we are, how clean our places are, how attractive they are, how convenient our locations. If you don't have good people, people won't come in there. You, you smile at me, I'll smile at you. <laughs> well, as my wife will tell you, I like to be in charge. And I think, uh, uh, I'm not sure I could have ever worked for anybody for a long period of time. Uh, I just uh, have always liked to be the person who was in charge. And when you're or the CEO, you're in charge. Now, uh, but you have to take that, it's a responsibility. And while you might be in charge in making decisions, all the people who are on your team, who are working for you, who are working for the company, they're placing their future in your hands. And it's an awesome responsibility because you have to make sure that you treat them well enough, you pay them well enough, you give them the right kind of benefits so they can prosper, so they can raise their family, so they can get ahead. So being in charge is one thing, but understanding the responsibility of being in charge is a whole different thing. Well, yeah, you do, but it's, it's a challenge. And you say, hey, you know, if, if you're gonna be successful, you know, you don't have problems, you have opportunities. And it's a challenge to, you know, one day we figured out how much it costs us to open the doors every day. And you know, you say, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. But we got to sell a lot of products and we have to have a lot of good people to sell those products to be able to do it. And it becomes a challenge. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a ball game. You know, you want to play the best team and then you want to win. And so, uh, it, it's a challenge to play the best team, but you want to play the best team because then you've won. Well, any time you are uh, uh, in charge of something and you have to do something that is not a pleasant task, you have to dismiss people. You have to tell people no to certain things. Uh, that's what you like least, but really it's a challenge. Uh, I remember in the very start of my business career, I was talking to an older gentleman. Uh, we were having to uh, dismiss somebody, and the person said, well, remember this, you aren't really firing that person. He or she is firing himself or herself because they didn't perform. But you have to look at, back at yourself and say, hey, am I responsible for why that person 
did perform. So those are the things that, that, that you kind of have to take into consideration. First of all, being optimistic and positive. You never build a company or get anything done without being positive, being optimistic. Uh, you know, you don't like to be around negative people. Uh, if you're getting a list of people that come to your house for a party and there's somebody that's a negative person, you say, ooh, why do we want to have that person there? He or she will just, you know, badmouth everything and everybody. And in business, you have to be positive. And I think that is the number one thing to, for to be successful in business. You have to be positive. Now, with being positive, you have to be realistic. You can't let that optimism get to where you get too far strung out, for example. So you have to be realistic. But I think you have to be positive. The next thing is, is everybody tries to complicate things in business, and you have to keep things simple. You have to do the right thing. You have to work hard, and you have to have high goals and high standards. But first thing, you got to be positive. Ooh, that's a great question, and it's a question that... Uh, uh, I just thank the good Lord every day that we're here in Knoxville. Well, first place, uh, you know, we have everything you want in Knoxville. I mean, let's never underestimate having a university here. A university can help you in business in so many ways. So that is a, a, a great asset. We have the lakes and the mountains. We have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. We have Oak Ridge, we have TVA, we have those things. But the best thing we have in Knoxville really is people uh, have a basic understanding of right and wrong here. And uh, people work hard in Knoxville. And it, you know we'll want to bring somebody in here and uh, uh, he or she will be a little hesitant, reticent about coming. And once they get here, then we'll say, hey, we'd like to transfer you someplace. Ooh, no, no, I don't want to leave, you know. But it's just a place that grows on you. I think people value doing the right thing. It's a, uh, it, it's, it's a community where people care about each other. It's a caring community. It's a, uh, it's a sports community. Let's face facts. People like athletics. I like athletics. We like to go to the ball games. We got the Vols. I think that's a big Big attribute. Going back to the university is a big attribute to being here, but uh, you know it's just a great place, great place to raise children. Please, people understand the basic values. I think people have uh, good value systems, and so uh, I think it's a great place for a company to be. Well, I think as business men and women, we have a responsibility, and uh, we make money in the community, so we have to give back to the community. I have told this story many times, but uh, when we first started in business, uh, you know, it was just really me and I was very busy. And a, uh, 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 a city councilman named Max Friedman, who had a jewelry store on Gay Street, called me and wanted me to work in what was then called the Community Chess, which is now the United Way. And I said, uh, Mr. Friedman, uh, I appreciate it. I was in my 20s, and I said, but I've just started this business, and I've got three kids, and I'm just too busy. And he said, what do you do, son? And I said, well, we sell gasoline. And I said, well, who do you sell it to? I said, well, people here in Knoxville and the places where we have gas stations. And he said, you have to pay the rent. And he, he was, is, whatever the right... <laughs> He, he was not and still is right. Uh, a business man or woman who makes a company that makes money in the community and does well in the community uh, owes its community to give back. And a, uh, a community will only be as strong as its business leadership and its business leadership that participate in the community. You show me a vibrant, growing community and I'll show you a group of business leaders who participate in the community, who work in United Way, who work at the churches, who, uh, who, who work at the Little League games, who, you know, who care about other people, who are kind people and uh, are caring people. And I think that's what we have in Knoxville. We have a community that people care about each other. Uh, 
you want to be challenged. You want to be overwhelmed. If you aren't challenged and you aren't overwhelmed, you haven't set high enough goals. There's something, if, if what you're doing isn't challenging, isn't a little bit overwhelming, you say, ooh, can I do this? Then you aren't doing enough. And, you know, uh, as I said before, the country music singer Roy Acuff's favorite saying was, be careful where you aim, you might get there. If you aim high, you'll be surprised at what you can achieve.